guys, welcome to Nora Head Lighthouse, Bungary Nora Point after Aboriginal Bungary. Uh, my name's Graham. I'm tour coordinator here at the uh, lighthouse. I've uh, been here about four years. I've uh, lived in the area all my life. I used to surf down around here, leave my surfboard at the lighthouse. Probably about eight years old. Uh, back in the early days there used to be little fishing shacks down there and we'd stay Saturday nights in the fishing shacks and just watch the lighthouse rotate around and uh, of course it, it all started from there. This is James Barnett's, uh, one of his best designs, his last design lighthouse, and it's really his best one because we've got domes in our lighthouse. Byron Bay's got pyramids and a few others are all different shapes. With the domes on ours, uh, it's the most aerodynamic lighthouse in the, along the whole of Australia because of the dome section. Um, there's no wind noise if we have a 100 mile an hour wind or, you know, through here, there's no whistling or howling, it's all very quiet. And also if we have any bad weather, like in uh, hail storms, uh, you get that ricochet effect, the hail will come down and hit and skid because of all the roundness, so it's a, it protects the building, so it's a very, very good design. And also on a beautiful day, you look like you're in the Greek islands. We're a 360 degree flashing uh, lighthouse, we, we go right around 360 degrees because if you look, we've got Cabbage Tree Bay there, we've got the, the entrance over there, so we've only got about 40 degrees of land, the rest is water, so that's why we have our 360 degrees. Built here mainly because Cabbage Tree Bay was very uh, busy in the early days. Back in the 1850s up to the 1890s and uh, 1900s, it was sort of one of the largest hardwood industries in the world. Um, we had you know, 70 and 80 million railway sleepers coming out of just two valleys. Uh, turpentine trees were used for, um, for bridges and jetties. Uh, and of course, Western Red Cedar was like gold. Uh, so yes, it was full on here. So George Bloodworth, back in uh, 1800, he built a little jetty, uh, finished it in 1810. And he used to get cedar from the mountains and he used to bring them down to Cabbage Tree Bay here and put on the little boat there. Uh, so it was a very busy little port here. So, uh, and there was lots of actions because uh, we've got all these points along here which have got a magnetic effect on about them, uh, which can affect the compasses of ships. There's a reef out there which is uh, very, very dangerous. Uh, there's a 30 metre trough between uh, us and the reef. Uh, but a lot of the ships didn't realise that and so they went around the outside of the reef. Unfortunately there's a tongue that comes out from the reef out there uh, and at different times of tide, heights, uh, a lot of the ships would hit that but n not realising that the safest part into Cabbage Tree Bay was between us and the reef. This is our danger window. Uh, we've got 280 candle power here. Uh, it shines through this uh, red window. It's just a narrow 30 degree beam and it shines straight across the bull reef, which is a kilometre from the top of the lighthouse out there. So it just means when ships come down at the night time, uh, as soon as they see the red window, uh, they know there's a danger between them and the shore and they move to the left until the red window disappears. Once the red window disappears, they know they're in safe deep water. If the red window doesn't disappear, they hit the rocks. Very simple, simple as that. This lens, uh, there's quite a few in Australia, I think about 21. Uh, this is the largest one, it's insured $5 million because it's uh, pretty rare. Uh, 600 lead crystal glass prisms and the big brass cage. Uh, the lens weighs 5 tonnes, uh, so it's very heavy. Uh, it floats on 10 litres of mercury, so the mercury takes the 5 tonne weight. A big bearing in there keeps everything nice and steady. So it's just like a ship's compass, it just floats. So in the early days, uh, the lighthouse keeper would come up to the clock mechanism, he would carry up the drum, kerosene drums, fill up the big tank, he'd light the four big wicks, get them burning nicely, then he would adjust the breeze with all the vents right around here uh, to make sure that the wicks were burning nicely, uh, get rid of the kerosene smell as well. Then he would take the brake off the clock mechanism, the counterweight would start to move down and off went the lens. And we flash every 15 seconds, that's our signature flash. Uh, you can see it's, like I said, about 50 k's out to sea. And uh, yeah, then the lighthouse uh, keeper is up here for four hours, adjusts the wicks every now and again, make sure that everything was running and it didn't stop. Uh, lighthouse keeping was a job for life, virtually. A lot of the lighthouse keepers had uh, 35, 40, 42 years service here. They would go from lighthouse to lighthouse around Australia, spend so many years, and the more experience they got, the more isolated places they were put. The lighthouse keepers here, we had three here. Uh, there was. Uh, the Kells, the Hansons and the Williams and they had 17 kids amongst them all together, they all lived here. Uh, then they would do their maintenance during the day, uh, pick up a bit of sleep of course, but yes, they, it wasn't allowed. And also they used to do a weather report every three hours and they would run weather report flags up down there 
because uh, the ships were going past here had an updated weather report every three hours and also they had to communicate with the ships just by a um, not a semaphore system, it was more like signal flags. We got flags A to Z, zero to nine, and uh, they could virtually talk to the ships. Now uh, the original flag that was down there could fly about 13 flags so they could have a really good chat. But there were many times that there were some wrecks out there and they had their lifeboats and they would, they, they would go out in all kinds of rough weather to try and save people and everything. Very important, the light had to be going, no matter what. The history around the area, you know, there's, there's so much history here. You know, we've had Aboriginals and Bush Rangers and convicts, uh, and Bungary, who, uh, who lived here with his grandfather for many years, uh, he was very famous, the same as uh, Ben Along in Sydney. Uh, he was a good friend of Governor Macquarie's, uh, who was the first Aboriginal, him and another guy, a young kid called Nambry. They actually sailed around Australia with Matt Bass and Flinders when Bass and Flinders mapped Australia in the early days. And then he went with uh, Peter King over to Western Australia to get Perth up and running. Uh, so a very important Aboriginal, and he lived here, and that's why it's called Bungary Nora Point. There's so much history, it's just uh, a lot of people don't realise and it's just lovely to tell them all about the area. So much, so much into the lighthouse, you know, it's just beautiful.